So the Wonder Snail from Scythe. This is a fan with a very particular name, but one that certainly stands out as unique. Scythe was kind enough to send me two of these fans to test on my water-cooled setup, but first let's do a quick unboxing. Similar to Noctua fans, it comes with a couple of premium features, sleeved cables, anti-vibration mounts, a 20cm extension cable and detachable rubber pads. I have to say it feels quite good in the hand, it has a nice heft to it and the materials used seem of a very high quality. I like how Scythe designed the rubber pads, which I think are nicer than the ones found on Noctua fans. These pads snap on and off super easily and they add very little to the total width, meaning that the fan will sit as close as possible to the radiator without creating much of a gap. As a direct comparison, I'll be using the trusty P12 PWM from Arctic. This is a lot more minimalistic fan, it just comes in a small cardboard box, not much going on here other than some basic screws and the fan itself. And yeah, it feels way cheaper in comparison, there's no question about it. So we'll have to see how it compares to the Scythe. The Wonder Snail has a retail price of $16.95 US dollars, while the Arctic has a retail price of just under $10. In Europe, you can often find it in the $5 to $6 range. The Noctua NFA 12 for reference has an eye-watering price of about 30 to 33 US dollars, nearly double the cost of the Scythe and, well, you can do the math on the Arctic. My test setup consists of my Form T1 custom loop, but for the purpose of this video I am using it in bench table mode, which means no top or side panels, also because these full-size fans wouldn't fit with the panels back on. I'm going to start the testing by mounting the fans in the pool configuration, which is how I would normally do it for this build. The radiator used here is the same XSPC TX240. I did my best to normalize the loudness of the fans by matching their noise levels, but also going by ear and choosing levels that I perceive to be the closest. And more importantly, I wanted to focus on sweet spots, daily use levels where the fans perform at a good balance between noise and performance. The first noise normalized test is at the 36 decibel level. We're looking at the maximum coolant temperature after a 30 minute session of Cyberpunk 2077. The results are quite close together, with the Arctic pulling slightly ahead with a 1.4 degree lead. On the second testing level at 39 decibels, the gap between the fans closes so much that they are practically identical. Here's how the fans perform with some additional testing in the push configuration. Curiously, both fans perform ever so slightly worse, but the results remain consistent. Looking at the highest RPM that these fans can spin at, and we see that while indeed the Wonder Snails can spin really fast, these speeds are completely unusable. The top speed of the Arctic, however, remains somewhat usable if the situation is dire enough to call for it. Decibels don't tell the whole story, and the audible frequencies that fans generate are different, and so is the perceived noise. Let's have a listen to some recordings. Keep in mind that normally you would sit further away, so this is an exaggerated scenario. One thing about the Arctic is that even though it doesn't have any rubber pads, it actually is very well balanced, sending very little vibrations into the case. That said, there is a definite resonance that you can hear at various speeds with the Arctic. I would say that the fans are performing very close to one another. I would have liked to see the scythe pull further away, perhaps closing the gap towards Noctua's NFA-12, and it certainly does in terms of premium features, but in terms of noise normalized performance, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. I would definitely like to see the Wonder Snail in a 140 size, as the competition there would be very interesting to see. That's it for this one, thank you for watching and see you guys in the next one.